Hello everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction. Today we're going to be taking on an absolute classic, an emotional roller coaster. One of the most iconic songs ever written, originally by Simon and Garfunkel, with a number of amazing new renditions having been done in the last few years. Primarily Disturbed and Pentatonix has done a cover. I've even done a cover of this. Tommy P did an incredible acapella cover of this, which I'll likely be reacting to at some point. Shouts to Tommy P. Fellow bass gang member and a, a good friend at this point. Um, so today we are going to be checking out Pentatonix's version of The Sound of Silence. And uh, this is one akin to most of the videos I've seen. Like, I mean, I've been in the acapella world for a while, so I've seen pretty much all the these uh, songs that I'm reviewing and giving analysis and critique and reacting to. It's not just a reaction. I'm going to keep reminding people of that in the start because there's always a few people who are like, why are you taking so long? Why are you talking so much? And it's because I'm not just reacting. I'm actually giving a lot of feedback and uh, digging deep into what's happening musically. So that's why they take so long. So for the 98% of you that love the analysis, stick around, much, much more to come. And for the 2% of you that really don't like the analysis, there are plenty of other reactors to watch. <laughs> and I wish you the best. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in. Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted Silence. Oh, dude, Pentatonix kicks me right in the emotional nards every time. My, um, the Hallelujah reaction I did, they, uh, YouTube accidentally pegged it for their sing along, which is blocked worldwide. So that's currently being disputed. Hopefully, that reaction will go up. I got a little emotional on that one. And if you haven't seen it because it's still blocked, I got a little emotional on that one. And because Pentatonix has a way of making me emotional when I listen to them. It is the beauty of their chords. It is the heartfelt emotion that they bring forth. Even though all of this is recorded in a studio, in a booth, you know, and then they're lip syncing in the video, even fighting through these walls of non-reality, basically, you know, this is not a live performance they still have a way of reaching out and, and touching emotions. And it's really amazing. I love how this piece starts just with Scott and his wonderful, like, low baritone, his crazy range. Hello, darkness, my old friend, hello. F sharp, so this is the, this is the standard key that this one's done in, F sharp. F sharp minor, A major. And uh, he sounds glorious in that low range, in that low chest range for him. <clears throat> so he has a he has a beautiful opening, and I love that they start this bare bones. It sets up, what's my word? Contrast for later. So it gives this song a lot of range to build towards, towards that big climax we'll probably get in verse verse four. Usually every, every people do a different number of verses sometimes on these covers. I don't remember if they do all of them or not. And then when the other voices come in, there's just nothing more beautiful than when Pentatonix comes in on, and they're all on one unified vowel, like an ooh, um, ooh, oh, ah, anything, any, any vowels where they're all blending together. There's just, there's just no group that has a better blend. And, and there's no group that I've seen so far that has a way of really capturing emotion in their, in their music videos and in, in their in their raw audio, if you just listen to this piece, so such a great intro. Let's back up just a bit to get into the transition. Of silence. 
In restless dreams I walked alone Narrow streets of cobblestone Need the halo of a street lamp I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light That split the night And touched the sound of silence oh, Such a great second verse and such a such a great way to build upon what they laid down with the foundation in the first verse. Also, I love that they have Kevin doing perk. That, in acapella versions, is rare. Mine didn't have it. Tommy's doesn't have it. I don't think any version I've heard outside of this acapella version has perk. Um, and Kevin does a, a beautiful... He's not, he's not going crazy with it yet. He's just kind of... They're just building a little bit of momentum. Building a little bit of steam getting us more engaged, slowly ramping up the intensity. Mitch's voice is just incredible. I mean, you, you can see me kind of melt right when Mitch starts singing. Every time. It's just, it's just an amazing voice. I said it on their hallelujah. It's once in a generation, a truly special talent, and just a beautiful instrument. And Mitch knows how to use every, every aspect of it. It's really amazing. I love, love listening to Mitch and everything Mitch does. <clears throat> um, some other things. There's not a whole lot going on yet, uh, background-wise. There's a lot of harmonies coming in and out. We're not quite getting hit with a wall of sound, which you can tell they're building towards. With, with the So Mitch is singing in a higher range than Scott, which already adds to the intensity. You have a little bit of perk coming in, so you can tell... They're just they're just moving they're just advancing the ball. They're getting they're getting this cover going. They're repping they're they're revving up the intensity. They've already got us hooked in with the beauty of it. I mean, right from when Scott opens his mouth at first, we're already hooked. So it's just such it, they're doing such a great job. It's it's pretty rare when I have much critique for pentatonics. They just they pretty much can do no wrong in my eyes. I'm looking for it, but hallelujah, I had nothing to say. And Sound of Silence so far, I just think it's wonderful. So, on that note, let's see. I'm keeping a keeping a sharp eye, a sharp ear open. You guys know I can critique the best of them. And in the naked light I saw E2. Matt. Listen, Matt had huge shoes to fill coming in after Avi, and they are different singers. They have different voices, and Matt has just done an exceptional job. He's so good. He's got. He's so versatile. He can do. He can do the kind of. I've talked about it before, like the the clean but jumpy bass, um, that Avi was was so famous for. And he has this, I mean, he has an exceptional upper range. I mean, he really sounds like a berry tenor when he gets up there. Uh, high baritone, low tenor, whatever you want to call it. He's got great belting in his high chest voice. And he also has a nice vibrato when he lets it spin, which is truthfully pretty rare in, in any kind of uh, pop singing to have a really clean, free-flowing vibrato. That's something you really get with classical singers. So it's always really nice to hear people in the pop genre when they have that, because that takes a relaxation and it takes a proper breath support. It's good singing. A uh, clean, steady vibrato comes from good singing, and you can tell when it's when it's forced. Um, this was not Matt. So Matt, Matt, he he's a he's singing bass in the group. He's got all the bass range, but he also has a wonderful extension up into his higher chest range. You can tell the intensity is revving up. 
uh, Kevin went from just the kind of like that kind of perk to like now we've got some like we got some body hits we got some big claps we got some we got some clashes uh crashes excuse me we got some crashes going on we have that and we have the not just in matt sola do we have belting but we have the entire background arc also belting getting up higher and higher in their ranges adding to that intensity verse to verse and i think that's verse three so we should have two more to go and i'm guessing if i remember correctly this is how most versions are done verse four gets pretty crazy verse five could even get pretty crazy but it always gets pulled back at the end i mean it's called the sound of silence right it's not called the sound of belting so at the end they usually leave us with that kind of ominous yet beautiful yet haunting vibe and i have no doubt that pentatonix is going to get us there So beautiful solo from Kristen there. Not a ton arrangement wise and intensity wise, not a ton differently other than now we have Matt back to doing a bass line, a full bass line and not singing the solo. So we have, we've gotten, an, I mean, the bass line is a very important part of every acapella song. I mean, 99 point, we'll say all the time, bass line is always important. So now that Matt is back to doing a full bass line and not singing the solo, we just have one more element filled out, which does add to the intensity and add to the fullness of this verse four. We have Matt on the low bass. We have the perk doing what the perk was doing with the big body hits, big big kicks, big crashes. We have uh, Kristen singing in the same octave as Mitch. And we have Mitch and Scott up in belt land going crazy with the harmonies. So it's a lot of intensity. That's that's what we want out of verse four in this song. So really, really well done. So still, uh, whoop, nothing to say. It's just it's just excellent. It's just excellent. Is why I love reviewing and giving my analysis for pentatonics. It's a lot of fun. interesting you can hear this is a vocal thing you can hear scott doing a little bit of what's called vowel modification when he goes up to what's the word the God, instead of meh like we say made the first the first vowel that's really an open e eh made made and he's going a eh. it's like a closed e so whatever pitch that is High F sharp, F sharp four. Scott must feel more comfortable with a bit more of a closed sound, an E instead of an E. It's subtle, but you can hear, if you're paying attention, it goes a little bit what you might expect for vowel wise on that F sharp four. Let's go back and listen to this and just listen and just try to notice that he's just closing the vowel down a little bit, which for his vocal track, for his voice, he knows his voice better than anyone. I'm sure that's how he gets his best sound on that vowel, on that pitch, which is the kind of thing you're doing as an advanced singer. You're trying to maximize each vowel on each pitch to make every note in your entire range sound good, no matter what you're, no matter what you're doing. It's, I think of it kind of like vocal engineering. That's how I approach singing opera. That's how classical musicians sing it. And it's so great when you hear a pop singer that has taken that time and care and it's not just relying on natural talent. A lot of pop singers do. And that's kind of what's valuable about the pop voice is it is kind of this natural thing. 
and we value how that natural sound is. There's so many amazing natural singers. You can tell Scott's put a little more work into figuring out what works for him in certain parts of his voice. So let's go back and just listen on that. Um, in God's they made, and you can just listen to how he closes that vowel down ever so slightly. In the So if it were the same vowel, normally you would think the same as prayed, um, they made, but it's prayed, they made, and it's a little closed. It's just a little different. Those three vowels, three, it should be the three same vowels, and, and that last one's just slightly different. So that's a little uh, nerdy vocal technique thing. Vowel modification. In the Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. So, first verse, Scott solo. Second verse, Mitch solo, up an octave. Kirsten, no, Matt, who went third? Matt went third, I think. Matt, back down an octave. Kirsten, back up an octave? If I have the order wrong, forgive me. I'm trying to figure out what orders here. And then um, this last one, Scott starts the solo, but then... It's the three of them. It's Kristen, Scott, and Mitch all singing the solo together, hitting crazy harmonies, high belts. Matt's still doing that very movie bass line. Kevin's hitting all the big perk sounds. So arrangement-wise, other than a few, there are a little few breakdowns, which I like. I love it when, when you take an arrangement and you, and you spin it a little bit. There are a lot of those little moments throughout, which is wonderful, and Pentatonix always does that. They always have creative arrangements. Is one wonderful thing about them, but that but as far as the overall arrangement, the intensity was similar versus three through five. The difference was who was soloing, where the where the belts were in their vocal ranges, a little bit of how the high harmonies were structured, and they were making subtle changes. Nothing crazy drastic, but those subtle changes made it feel. So the song wasn't just at one level from verse three through five, even though the elements were all similar, we did get that increased intensity and emotion. Verses three, all the way through verse five. And then they just brought it back at the end and I love how they finished this. They didn't even finish on a chord. They just finished all in unison. Do on that F sharp. Oh, just kidding. Sorry, F sharp is the five. They finished. Did they finish on the B natural together? Yeah. Okay. So they all they all finished in unison on that B natural. So I love. I love. Like I said, sound of silence, not the sound of belting. So they're bringing it back to something real simple, real pure at the end. Guys, it's another amazing song by Pentatonix. I hope to get around to a lot of their work. Remember, I'm reading the comments. I'm reading your suggestions. I'm getting around to them once per week. And um, thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.